From screen size and camera to how to save money by shopping the sales, I explain what to look for when you're buying a new phone. Whether you're looking for the latest iPhone, the best Samsung Galaxy or more affordable handsets further down the range, buying a new phone can be an absolute nightmare. The huge amount of choice from a wide variety of brands, each promising to offer the best experience, means it's never been more difficult to decide which phone is the perfect one for your specific needs. To help your money go towards exactly what you need, I have put together my top tips for how to buy a phone in 2021. Knowing what you really want from a phone will help you narrow down your choices and make sure that you're only spending money exactly where you need to. The most expensive flagships around come with incredible cameras, but if you're really not that bothered about photography, then you can save yourself a bundle and simply look elsewhere. If you watch a lot of video or play a lot of games on the move, then you will benefit from a bigger screen. Budget phones, meanwhile, tend to offer very little in the way of storage for your apps and games and videos, so if you do enjoy taking a lot of photo and video or you download a lot of flashy mobile games, then you'll need to look at phones that offer more storage or at phones which offer expandable storage. It's really important then that before you go out and spend your money, you really think about what features are most important to you, which are the features that you made most use of in your previous phones. Previously, buying a budget phone meant suffering with frustratingly slow performance and sacrificing all of those cool features that you would find on much more expensive phones. These days, that is much less the case, with even some of the most budget phones around still offering things like multiple lens rear cameras. You can easily pick up phones that will let you tackle all of your everyday essentials, as well as letting you take some great photos and play some mobile games too, all without emptying your bank. So don't think you need to spend flagship levels of cash in order to get what you need. You can of course find big discounts and promo deals around the major holidays, things like Black Friday or Amazon's Prime Day. And it's not just Amazon that does deals on Prime Day, you will still find all of the major electronics retailers, as well as many of the networks as well, trying to get in on the action and tempt your money away from you with discount handsets and a bunch of bundled accessories. So if you're shopping for a new phone near to these dates, it might just be worth holding on that little bit longer and seeing what you can get on the cheap. Of course, these same retailers will almost certainly have regular deals on throughout the year, so it's always worth doing your research and seeing if you can save yourself a bundle. Last year's phones can often be a great deal too, particularly as retailers will often have lots of stock that they're trying to get rid of on the cheap in order to make room for the new models. Phones don't really age that quickly though, so last year's phones, particularly ones at a higher level, will still have amazing performance and handle everything that you'd want them to this year. Do be more careful if you're buying several generations old though, and particularly if you're buying your phone used. While the hardware itself might still be great for what you need, manufacturers tend not to support older handsets, and if your phone is no longer supported with security updates, then it can be really at risk from hacking. Most phones tend to be supported for at least two to three years, but it's definitely worth checking out if the older phone you're buying is still getting its security updates, because if not, it could be a real liability. 5G is the latest standard that promises hyper-fast download speeds wherever you are. Like any new technology, it's mostly found on higher-end handsets, but it is starting to trickle its way down to the mid-range and even on some budget handsets too. Coverage for 5G still isn't everywhere yet though, so it is worth considering whether or not you actually need 5G and, if so, whether it's actually available in your area. If you're planning on keeping your phone for at least two or three years, then odds are, even if you don't have 5G right now, you probably will have it available within that time frame, so it is worth thinking ahead. Even if you're on the fence about 5G right now, it may be that in nine months or a year's time, you feel differently and you may well regret not taking the plunge sooner. 
you've been using an iPhone for some time, then odds are you've probably spent quite a bit of money on iOS apps or movies from iTunes. Maybe you're also used to using iCloud, and maybe you use your iPhone as a remote for your Apple TV. If this sounds like you, then your life probably will be easier by sticking with another iPhone rather than switching to Android. Likewise, if you've spent loads of money buying apps from the Google Play Store, you'll want to stay on that side of the fence. Otherwise, it is pretty simple to switch platforms and CNET does of course have a variety of guides available to you on how best to do that. Finally, whatever handset you get, make sure you're buying it from a trusted source and that you invest in a decent case and screen protector to keep it looking its best for longer. So that brings me to an end of today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more from How To Do It All.